Welcome to Rope Dropping Knowledge, where we guide you through the magic of Disney. Hello. Hello. All right. We only have a few more days for the giveaway. So. Yes, two more. Two, well, three, two. two. <laughs> Saturday, 11.59 p.m. I have to quickly wrap it up and package it and send it. Yep. So it comes to you before Christmas, hopefully. Well, depending on where you live. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, shipping's going to be going to be a challenge but sometimes i wonder should we have prioritized you know more people get like getting more entries because i know the longer we keep it open the more entries you get Mm -hmm. or getting it to people before christmas and it might not get to them before christmas depending although the year goes by fast (laughs) you can use it next year (laughs) if it doesn't get you on time yeah (laughs) you know i mean i have some stuff where i'm like oh it's Christmas now. I can use this now. Yeah, and I'm just talking, yeah, just for the Christmas ones because, I don't know, because most people aren't going to the parks. Most of our listeners, mm-hmm. I mean, I would say the majority of our listeners are in California, mm-hmm. but that doesn't mean the majority are going to be going to Disneyland during the Christmas season. Right, right. Definitely not between now and Christmas. So I don't know if. If it really matters to the people, whoever wins, you know, if they get to wear it to Disney because they probably didn't have plans on going to Disney anyway. Right. The most people, you know. I'm sure there's a few that are, but. But like for me, if I won something like that, I'm more of a collector. So I would just keep it pristine. You know, yeah. like those Doctor Strange years. You yeah. know, I would never wear it. I'll just keep it there in a box to look at. Yeah. I guess if it's Christmas time, it's good for the gram, right? You could say, oh, I won oh, yeah. one of these mm-hmm. things and you put it on your Instagram. Put it near your tree. Yeah, yeah, it, it's definitely a cool, uh, cool Christmas gift, cool Christmas aesthetic. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we'll see. Um, it's really the only holiday, though, that timing may not matter as much. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. with Halloween, people do other things for Halloween yeah. that, that are like out and about, you know, trick or treating, taking their kids out, you know. But. You're not going to, well, you could wear Disney stuff, I guess. Oh, I see, I see. Outside of the parks, Mm -hmm. where Christmas is more like, you know, especially for Loungefly, you're going to probably wear it at the parks. Now, some people might have a Christmas party that they would use it. I see people out and about wearing Loungefly Disney stuff all the time, and I'm always like, hey, nice backpack, or hey, nice purse, because it's like a Loungefly Mickey or... um, Nightmare Before Christmas or Winnie mm. the Pooh, whatever it is, people yeah. do wear it outside of the park. Maybe because I'm a guy, I don't notice. Yeah, I mm. notice because it's like if I see anything Disney, I'm like, oh, cool. Yeah. You know? I see this girl on Thanksgiving in San Diego um, trying to get last minute um, Thanksgiving stuff like pies, but not Julian pies. I was going to tell her, well, why don't you grab the Julian one? But you know, none of my business. Anyways, <laughs> she was <laughs> she was like last minute Thanksgiving shopping, grocery shopping, and she was wearing a Disneyland jersey, a purple one. Ah, nice. So people wear jerseys out and about. I mean, I see people, I guess in Southern California Yeah, that happens. <laughs> you even see homeless people wearing jerseys. No. Yeah, because really? people give away their old jerseys. They donate them. <laughs> interesting <laughs> and what was so funny is because i was this was a couple of years ago for, you know pre-pandemic but um could i worked in my office you know used to be downtown mm-hmm. and i saw somebody in that um acid wash blue jersey mm, that mm-hmm. everyone's looking for it no one yeah. can get it anymore the one because, you have right yeah i have one yeah and i was like all these disney fans want this jersey but they don't make it anymore but this homeless guy got <laughs> one because it was donated, probably. Yeah. Because <laughs> someone donated their old one, and he has it. <laughs> that person should have eBayed it. <laughs> <laughs> homeless guy should eBay. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's life in SoCal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yes, so our giveaway ends this Saturday, um, the seventeenth, eleven fifty nine p.m. Pacific Standard Time. 
All you have to do is direct message us via Facebook or Instagram or info at ropedroppingknowledge.com. If you could have your own Disney shop, restaurant, or attraction, what would it be? Pretty simple. Mm -hmm. And the winner will be drawn at random on Sunday. And, uh, yeah, we'll announce it. And th the prizes are actually pretty good. good. Christmas prize. Big big Christmas prize. A whole lounge fly collection. Snow globe, lounge fly, Disney backpack, yep. purse, and wallet. Yep. All right. And if you want to know what they look like, you can go to our Instagram. Okay. So... You're like in the collaborating mood. Is that the holiday <laughs> season? <laughs> well, I think we're all in the real making mood. You made a few <laughs> reels. Um, we collaborated with Johnny from the DMSW podcast to make a reel. He's doing this thing leading up to his 40th birthday where he wants to make 40 reels. That's a lot of um, reels. For the next mm. month. So it's two mm. a day. Yeah, he's mm -hmm. calculated it to equal 40 um, to celebrate his 40th. So he asked anyone to sign up. And we signed up. <laughs> or I signed <laughs> us up. <laughs> yeah, you signed us And then so. <laughs> um, I was like, I'll sign up and volunteer Brian for the ideas. <laughs> and so, yeah, Brian had the idea. And then I shared it with Johnny and he made a reel. Yeah, he's good at it. Yeah, he's he likes doing it. He's better so. than me. Yeah. He I he do. enjoys doing reels. So that's why he was like, okay, instead of celebrating 40, the way I'll celebrate is more fun as if I make reels. I was like, okay, <laughs> you think it's fun? <laughs> 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 but um, it was a reel about, oh, yes, it was real about second chances, like mm -hmm. how Iger, um, and then... You know, I mean, you guys can see it. It was a collab. Both yeah. of us have it up. Um, yeah, you can go to either one of our pages. But yeah, it's basically us convincing Iger to bring back the old Disney stuff. No park reservation, free Magical Express, <laughs> free Magic Band, free yeah. Fast Pass. And he used an uh, um, Ed Game clip. End Game clip. Endgame has so many memeable where, clips. <laughs> yeah, where Cap, Ant-Man, and Black Widow convinces Iger, a.k.a. Well, trying to. Tony Stark, for the time heist. Yeah. <laughs> So you want to go back in time. Back in time. So that's fun. Yeah, that was fun. Um, whew, I can't believe that. Well, almost that Christmas. It's weird because I'm just like chilling and not thinking about stuff. And you're going to be dropping off some presents Sunday to relatives. Yeah. Certain relatives that are Relatives around. we won't be seeing for Christmas. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's like... This month has already gone by fast, and it's a long month. That's why I was like, oh, shoot, I had to post a a festival of holidays item because Christmas is next week, so we only get one more, chan one more chance to do it yeah. after this week. So we're like, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's gone. This whole month has just been like, it's weird. So I think it's all the kid energy because you know how you have to wait so long for Christmas, and then in the month of December comes and Christmas goes by real yeah. quick. I think kids are... You know, psychokinetically speeding. <laughs> well, for me, it's like the busiest time at work. So the day goes by really fast and I wish it could extend longer. So you can do more work. Yes. So I can finish <laughs> my work. <laughs> I know it's sad that we're such workaholics. Not yeah. we, but <laughs> we as in as a society mm -hmm. or Americans. Maybe it's not like that you in France or whatever. You just don't know how to separate and put up boundaries. <laughs> <laughs> Well, at least you like your job. That's good. So, um, let's get into some headlines. Yeah. So, we this was old news, but we for, I guess I forgot to talk about it last week. But Disney's being sued over Genie Plus, over Disney Genie and Genie Plus. So, maybe some of us, some of you who despise <laughs> Genie Plus might be happy about this. Um, so according to a Business Journal article, um, the suit alleges that the company called Agile Journeys, LLC, it's a California-based company, and they filed a suit, a lawsuit, um, in a district court in Florida, and they're alleging infringement of patent that's dubbed the method and apparatus for providing visitors with a personalized itinerary 
and managed access to attractions. Seems like this company has already patented this type of application or whatever, or platform, and they're alleging that Disney's infringing upon their patent. I don't understand. <laughs> huh? I'm just like, what? <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, girl. <laughs> <laughs> it's a method providing visitors with personalized itinerary and managing access to attractions. It's pretty uh, obvious that Disney... Oh, so Genie copied them, is what they're saying. Yeah, that's the thing they patented. Okay, but you can't patent an idea. You have to patent, like, well, Apparently the, the USPT office approved it because it's a patent. Well, yeah, they patented... Well, I don't know if that's what it's dubbed. Win, that's what, what it's saying. called. But what they're alleging... If, if they're alleging that Disney somehow reversed engineered their technology and... As using the same technological processes that they patented, that's different. But just because, you know, it's kind of like saying, like, well, Lyft ripped off Uber because we have a thing that can drive, we have an app that, you know, you can schedule a ride with. Well, well it's a mm. type of technology. I don't know. Yeah. This lawsuit like Disney was also, this is the second allegation. Disney was aware of Agile's technology dating back to 2002. Mm. So probably what happens, this is what happens in the screenwriting community, and this is why a lot of um, production oh, companies don't emails. don't um, yeah they don't um, accept unsolicited screenplays. Like you can't just send a screenplay to like Kevin Feige or something mm-hmm. because if he looks at it and rejects it, but then has an idea independently of that to make his own, you could say, well, nope, he, I have happened. an email. He looked at it. That's it was my idea to make this movie. The you know, co-pat so. co-inventor of the patent, yeah. William Redman, probably sent something to them. Contacted Disney reps Trying regarding the technology, mm-hmm. and the suit has emails between Redman and Disney reps discussing the system. Right. And then the lawsuit also there's a Disney attempted to patent their own system multiple times, but was rejected mm. by the USPTO because it was already something that. So they must have tried patented. to use similar technology, or at least something within their technology was, you know. But it doesn't necessarily. I don't really mean, know, because it doesn't necessarily mean that because they were rejected, they they necessarily were using their technology though. It, it, it could have been anybody's, you know what I mean? Or it doesn't. It there, like kind of going back to like like we went through the whole copyright thing before, mm-hmm. you know, with one of our companies, and it's like, you know, somebody said that. Anything with shy in it, you can't use. Like, that's not true. Yeah, that. Like, <laughs> yeah, that guy was. He, I can tell he's like a salesman-ish because he was. But everybody, selling they're all like that. Yeah, all over. Yeah, it doesn't. But I'm saying and they're I'm trying like, to sell stuff too. So they're they're saying that Disney didn't. They probably spammed a lot of big corps, saying, "Hey, we have this technology," and they sent it to somebody. And like for example, for my company, somebody I they could just see who I am on a thing. Even though I'm in HR, they could send me an email and if I'm like dumb enough, just open it. You know, I'm not supposed to <laughs> open things. <laughs> but let's say I open it, right? Technically they could say, well the company was aware because Brian P and N H R opened this email that we sent them back in, you know, twenty twenty two. Um so yeah, it it's hard to kind of Then why bother um, patent patent No, you doing you, a patent, you patent if because so you have standing. So they wouldn't even get as far as like, you know, the first stage of a of a of a lawsuit. Right. Of, if they didn't patent it. Right. So, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're going to win because there's patent. There's there's people who it's almost like kind of um the people who I'm not saying that this is the case, but I'm saying there's a lot of people who just patent stuff hoping that they can sue a bigger company. It's kind of like people who buy Let's a bunch of domain, domain names and just sit on them. Like the UFC for the longest time didn't own UFC.com because somebody was like, ooh, this is going to be valuable someday, uh-huh. and they just bought it. Yeah. And then they sat on it, and then eventually UFC got it, but I'm sure those people got paid out. I could patent a lot of things, spam you know, every company in the world, and then as soon as one of these companies uses something that's similar, you know, and they're probably going to get paid out. But Well, that, that's the thing. I don't know what yeah. they're – 
demand is. Do are they demanding Disney cease this yeah. system, mm-hmm. which is good because maybe they'll go back to. But or but are they, they demanding that? But even if they, they demanded it cease, that could still be getting paid, right? Because if I say Disney, this thing that you have. You notice, like when Disney, yeah, um, but they could demand, give us whatever millions of dollars, and you can continue using it. No, or but but that's, buy our patent. No, but that's but that's actually less leverage when you say that, because now you're already in a negotiating phase, right? Mm-hmm. If I say this thing that you've implemented throughout the world that millions of people are using on a daily basis, I want you to stop. Disney's going to come starting with a big number. Hey, we can't do that. What do you want? As you, now you're from dealing from a position of strength. If you say, no, we want $10 million, and Disney's like, no. And now you're negotiating down. Yeah. You see what I mean? So a cease is actually stronger than asking for a bunch of money. Mm. Well, I don't I don't even try to understand patent law or whatever, or IP or whatever, because yeah. that's a totally different bar that lawyers have to take. Mm-hmm. And so I don't... Whatever they're alleging, it's fine. It sounds good to me. <laughs> I don't know. I don't even there, try to understand it. There's actually gangs who, yeah. and, and the reason I know this is well, is through, um, I believe it, through HR, not from a company perspective, but through um, threat assessment trainings. Mm. There's actually criminal gangs, and all they do is extort for patents. They mm. extort companies. They're not usually as big as Disney, mm-hmm. but like smaller companies that if they were to lose, mm-hmm. um, it would destroy their entire business. So they will do it and then they get like, you know, a few hundred grand here, a few hundred grand there. Oh, yeah. Because it's not really hard to patent something, you know. You just have to find kind of a niche and then say hey, do something. And then even if you have a losing case, they're going to pay you out before going to trial because yeah. going to trial is just going to be But there's also... Um, I don't know, laws against that. Because I don't know if you guys remember. Uh, well, you probably won't if you're not in the legal whatever. But the Trevor Law Firm mm-hmm. were these 20-something-year-old lawyers who went around mom-and-pop stores threatening um, lawsuits because of the way their credit card machines were being used, that mm-hmm. it shows all the numbers instead of just the last yeah. four or whatever. Mm-hmm. They were a and then they got paid, like, all right, then pay us, or consumers will come after you, whatever, class action, lawsuit, whatever it is they said. So all these mom and pops were paying, because mm-hmm. they're like, oh, shoot, you know, we don't want to, you know, don't take our credit card machine away from us, or whatever. And so, yeah, they got in trouble. They made a lot of money, but they also got in trouble, because I went to school with some of them, so... <laughs> so. But that yeah. wasn't really a patent case, though. No, but it was more like extortion. It was extortion, Yeah. yeah. Yeah, going after small and, companies. And if you want to, if something. anybody um, ever wants to know why credit card machines show all the numbers on it, I have a personal story that I could tell you guys someday. <laughs> I've told it to you, but <laughs> <laughs> um, personally involved with that <laughs> as a teenager. <laughs> but all right, but yeah, I'm, I'm not. Maybe their their claim is totally legit. I'm not saying that it's not. Uh, um, but I just know that. When any time a company invest, well, who knows? This is under JPEG. But <laughs> any time a company invest, typically, you know, the future of their company on something, basically, right? Because this is such a huge part of the parks and a huge part of their park revenue now. They would vet the yeah, smack out of it. They would. You but know who, what I mean? They like don't want said, anything. But you know, you never know. There's always holes. So yeah. So it could be legit. I doubt it, but you never know. Yeah, I've never even heard of this company. I mean, if they had said it, it, Google or something, maybe, but... <laughs> but it would be, it would be, Disney, either, that wouldn't happen with Google, you know? Yeah. Typically, it's... I mean, you would think if these guys wanted to sell their software, wouldn't they be at conventions? They probably were. Or they probably were. Yeah. Like, I mean, at expos and things you know? like that. Yeah. But I'm saying this is a way, because what happens is, because even if it's legit, it's still kind of... um. It's one of those things where they knew Genie Plus was launching, and Genie Plus has been around a while. They wanted the way an attorney, and this is the way it works, even if you're in the right, it's still, you're still shady. And, and, and this is what I mean. They want you to use it to a point to where you can not just shut it off. They want it mm-hmm. to be such ingrained as part of your infrastructure to where there's no way you can get rid of it now. So, like, if they would have sued, like, in the first 
couple months, mm-hmm. Disney would be like, okay, maybe this isn't worth it, or maybe yeah. we can just turn it off. They don't but want that. But then they wait until it's they wait until it's part of earnings calls and part of everybody's yeah. using it and part of it, it. You know, it has its own revenue stream. Yeah. Disney can't just shut it off. So now it's like now that's where the money is because mm-hmm. now it's such a part. It's almost like now it's like di- a part of Disney's body. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's when they're gonna launch the lawsuit. Which is smart, but it's still shady because it's not really about you protecting your IP. It's about you getting the most amount of money. That's why I say it's always about money. So, yeah. All right. What's next? Um. Well, this is kind of it's not Disney related, but kind of Disney related. Where Super Super Nintendo World has an opening date, February twenty twenty three, and all the Disney content creators shared it because you know when you're a disney content creator you also go to universal i guess um but except us <laughs> we haven't been to universal <laughs> <No>. <laughs> um it only took them two years to build so super mario world is gonna open in two years and a lot of disney fans are like come on it's taking like what 10 years i don't know it's 10 but it's a long time and there's still no opening date for tron the ride <laughs> at disney world yeah <laughs> So everyone was all like eager about that, but yet <laughs> it only took uh, Universal two years to build Super Nintendo World. Is that the same as the Epic World? Oh no, that's Florida. Okay, never mind. But this is um, Universal. Mm-hmm. I mean, LA. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I mean, I don't know ex- everything that's in it. I'm sure it does a couple of rides or whatever. But yeah, it's, it's not hard to make things that look like Legos. I mean, <laughs> it's I don't know. If it looks like Legos. I mean, I not saw Legos. The, I mean, I mean, the one in Japan is it's epic pretty cool. and legit, I mean, but yeah. I don't. I think it's similar. I'm not sure. It's no, I'm just saying it's not like advanced graphics or anything. I mean, it's it's basically based on a 1990 something game. Yeah. So, um, yeah. I mean, I'm not saying that it, it's. I don't think I don't think you can compare it because it's like you're not you're dealing with a park that only has to worry about park stuff. So the revenue from Universal Studios, like the parks, pretty much stays in the parks. What they make, they keep. Mm-hmm. It's not like they're funding Universal movies and mm. Universal. Like the parks at Disneyland are funding all the other Disney ventures. You know, they're building like retirement homes and stuff. <laughs> I, <think laughs> I, I sent you an article on you know, some scam. Oh, yeah, yeah, I have it in dot points. <laughs> yeah, but all those type of things, you know, the parks are the foundation of those things until those things become self-sustainable. Um, and so it's kind of hard to just say, well, why doesn't the Disney parks do this? Well, yeah, like, well, half our revenue is going here, and it's going here. and <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> There's so many hands in the pot. And, you know, Disney's you know? more like, perfectionists that wants it right so they have to do a lot of testing a lot of tweaks their imagineers are known worldwide to be the best right Mm -hmm. so they can't just be like okay let's draw this okay now build this okay we're done you know like that they're kind of they go back and forth like even the haunted mansion stuff you know Mm -hmm. listening to johnny's episode about that where this went wrong the hat ghost or whatever went wrong and so they had to take it out and then put yeah. it back in and whatever you know all the all those details yeah yeah it's and and even then it was like the, okay well we'll just wouldn't have his head come off and like well that's not good enough then they, yeah. have, they go back and redo it and they shut the ride and then down. they wanted it to be funny not scary right and mm-hmm. then oh maybe, maybe just scary or yeah, just funny or whatever yeah, now you know? it's too scary now it's yeah. a little too funny now yeah. it's little, and they'll go back and forth and yeah. each one caused our ride to shut down you know, yeah you know and sometimes for years you know yeah. <laughs> so it didn't open on time it didn't and, and that's all because they were trying to get things right yeah so it's i don't know yeah it is kind of apples and oranges i'm not saying that disney shouldn't speed up some things that they've promised you know like the avengers ride you know Tron. <laughs> but yeah it's um maybe for them it's not just switching something on and off i mean yeah. for universal they already had in japan and maybe they just duplicate it Maybe. But for Disneyland and Disney World, the div- different Disney parks, for example, the one, the Haunted Mansion in California is not the same as Florida. Yeah. And obviously in Paris, they're more like, we like scary. So theirs is 
totally yeah, haunted. More gothic. More, yeah, more gothic. Yeah. And then in Japan, they don't get all the humor, so it's like mm -hmm. something else. So yeah, yeah. So they can't just duplicate it. And maybe at Universal, but they, they just but, but when they can duplicate it, they do did it pretty quick. Yeah, I'm surprised they got Galaxy's Edge out from the date that they announced it to the opening yeah, day was yeah. freaking quick for an entire land. Yeah, and that and that's bigger than the Nintendo thing. And when you think about when, like you said, when they do have something, so they already had Mickey's, you know, Minnie's Runaway Railway. Yeah, that is already about to launch in yeah, Disneyland. Yeah, that and that was they started That'd that be less than a year ago. To see if it's exactly the same. Huh? Well, yeah, I think well, it the is? ride is exactly the same. Oh, it is okay. So that's why they can just duplicate it. Oh, I see. You know? That's why it's quicker. Yeah. yeah. You know, once they get it right, mm -hmm. you know. But if you're if it's something that's brand new, there it's going to be. Yeah. <laughs> But um, we'll see. You know, I mean, I, I don't know, but you can't compare it. I mean, it's still yeah, Universal yeah, yeah. is like, I mean, I'm sure Knott's put up three rides. No one even talked about it. I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I wouldn't even know Poor what they Knott's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <sighs> hey, man, a lot of our <laughs> friends with little kids have Knott's passes now. <laughs> Less yeah. tiring. It's for the grandparents. <laughs> yeah. Less tiring for the grandparents. <laughs> mm -hmm. But anyways, um, yeah. So, okay, let's move on to Marvel or movie stuff. Um, so Disney, interestingly enough, submits Thor 4, which is Love and Thunder, Doctor, S Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness, and Black Panther, Wakanda Forever for Best Picture Oscar. <laughs> yeah, I just put up a reel. And then you put up a reel <laughs> about that. Yeah. Yeah, it's been real. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, fans are just cracking up. I mean, I understand Black Panther. I don't understand the other two. Yeah, especially Thor. Especially Thor. Thor, Thor is like meh. <laughs> it, it's it's it, not a bad movie. No, it's just it's just when Thor is the first, other than Spider Man, I guess. When you think about Phase Four. Mm -hmm. Well, technically, Spider-Man supposedly was Phase Three. Actually, um, that was the oh. lo the last of Phase Three. So, when you think about Phase Four, Thor and Black Panther are the only like original Phase Three people, Phase Three heroes in them in mm -hmm. Phase Four. So, when you think about what was expected of Thor, was okay. You know, we've put up with the Eternals, you know. Shang-Chi was cool, but he's a new guy. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's it's like, you know, Black Widow. Well, no, that's true. Black Widow, I guess, was an original. Mm -hmm. You know, but that's during the pandemic. It, it did okay, you know. And then there was a bunch of drama around it mm -hmm. outside of it. So, and she's dead, <laughs> right? She, she's and we not, already know what happened. We, we already know <laughs> the end of the story, right? So, Thor was supposed to be... Well, no, the Doctor Strange came up before that, so I guess yeah, there, there was there's a. Well, few. the thing is with Thor is. But they were they were looking for Thor being one of the original three, right? Their trinity. Mm -hmm. I would say DC has their trinity: Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, mm -hmm. and then Marvel has their trinity: Thor, Thor Captain America, Iron Man, Iron for the Man. MCU. Yeah, mm -hmm. and Thor is like the original trinity, and so they were like, okay, finally we're going to get back to some of that old school, you know, old school for young kids for. <laughs> Uh, feel of the MCU, and they were expecting this grand thing, and it, they were, it's going to explain all the gods, and, and it was just kind of a Taika Waititi comedy, you know. It was yeah. It was and what fun. I was going to say was Ragnarok was so good, yeah, that there was such a high bar mm -hmm. that when you see this, you're like, meh. <laughs> well, it's not even that Ragnar Ragnarok was surprisingly good though. Yeah. So Thor: The Dark World. A lot of people, it's better movie than people say, but it, a lot of people would consider the, at the time was the worst MCU movie. Hmm. So that was the thing. So when Thor Ragnarok came out, everyone was like, oh, you know, I guess I'll see it. And, and it ended up being good. And then the Taika Waititi stuff and, um, you know, everything was so funny. Mm -hmm. And it was so uplifting and it had this adventure and it moved the Thor mythos forward. Mm -hmm. That and of course it ended with Thanos, you know, mm -hmm. in the post credit. Oh yeah. <laughs> so everything was like, um, it, it, it exceeded expectations. Yeah. Right. But then when you just do a, a lighter version of that again, 
it's not it, now they have that expectation now it, it's kind of like well it's the same jokes but it doesn't really do anything for the MCU storyline you know what i mean it's like kind of like okay you know i mean yeah there are a few new characters but the 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 best character in the movie was the villain who's dead now spoiler but he dies in at the Thor? end yeah oh yeah 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 you know christian bale yeah and so that he would have been an interesting character to carry forward yeah you know what i mean um even if he had like a change of heart or whatever it, he mm-hmm. he's an interesting character the same way kind of um killmonger is an interesting character that they killed off mm-hmm. so so they may regret that and, and and thor may be i think with that movie may start getting relegated to hulk status to where he's going just going to appear in other people's movies mm. So for them to, so it was a lot of mixed bag. Again, it's not a bad movie. I think mm-hmm. it's an enjoyable movie. If you're seeing it without a lot of MCU type expectations, like connecting it to the greater universe and mm-hmm. everything, okay, you know that's that's great. Um, you have a good time. I had a good time seeing it. Yeah, you know, it wasn't bad. But um, for them to have to haul that to put it for best picture and Oscar with no other. MCU movie out of like the twenty six something movies. Well, they put that and Doctor Strange. In no, I'm just talking about in the history of the MCU. Oh, the history. They don't think they yeah, ever they didn't put, put Endgame. They didn't want to. I know. <laughs> they didn't want to like lobby for Endgame, but they want to lobby for Thor. Yeah, and I think it's almost like they're trying to snatch a win somewhere. Did Simu Liu get mad that they didn't put his movie in there? No, because <laughs> he's always angry at something. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. He's always complaining about something. <laughs> Anyways. Um yeah, Doctor Strange maybe for special effects. Yeah. But yeah. I mean and, and I think they did put him f- for special effects for all of them too. Yeah, okay. But, so they, they nominated all of them for different categories. Black Panther I can see because like it the article is saying here, Angela Bassett was really the good. Performance was the great. performance was great. Performance, yeah. The performances were good. The the story was good, mm-hmm. um, and I think it actually does push the Marvel MCU story as a whole universe forward, mm-hmm. because now you know you have you know Namor and his kingdom. Mm-hmm. You have you know what's coming up with the Thunderbolts a little bit, mm-hmm. um, and so yeah, it, it it at least as far as the Earth stuff. So you have like, you kind of have like three, well, technically four parts of the MCU. You have, what we used to have is just two. We used to have like the um, the espionage type stuff, like Winter Soldier. Mm-hmm. And then you had like the space stuff, you know, mm-hmm. like Guardians and, and stuff. And, and, and a little bit Thor mm-hmm. was kind of in that too. Space magic. Now it's kind of into four. Now you have like, you know, espionage, space, cosmic stuff. That includes the multiversal stuff, mm-hmm. you know. But now you also have like the street level stuff, which is the stuff you're going to mostly see on Disney Plus, which is going to be like Daredevil, Echo, um, Hawkeye a little bit. You know, it's it's not really dealing with big type bads. It's dealing with like Kingpin, Crime Lord type stuff. Yeah. That street, a little bit below the international espionage, Winter Soldier stuff. Mm -hmm. Like the Winter Soldier, you know, he's not going to get involved in gang fights, right? Mm -hmm. He's above that. And then you have, like, now you have the fourth, which is the mystical stuff, like Mm -hmm. the werewolf by night, Moon Knight a little bit. Mm -hmm. You're going to have Agatha, Mm -hmm. Ghost Riders coming, Blades Mm -hmm. coming. So those are going to be kind of like your four, you know, slices of the MCU. And if you're going to have a the one thing that makes the MCU so popular is your, is the connectivity. Mm-hmm. So it's got to push one of those four forward, mm-hmm. you know? So if you're going to uh, do the space stuff, okay, we're going to want to see some Guardians things or some Eternals tie-ins or something, right? Mm-hmm. If you're going to do some espionage stuff, which Black Panther did, you know, it's moving forward some stuff that was kind of connected to the Winter Soldier, kind of connected to... Um, the Thunderbolts that are coming out, kind of, you know, as mm-hmm. you, things that you're going to see in the future. And it, some of the stuff that they started there is going to pay off in other movies and other franchises. Um, but Thor, not really, you know, <laughs> and, and, it, and it's bigger. It's the, more of the cosmic type stuff. 
but it's kind of like it was its own self-contained like story and it was just like all right and was the story that great it was good it was okay you know but it wasn't grand it wasn't something that you would think you know one of the original three avengers would be a part of so yeah but a lot of people are making fun of it um <laughs> you know because best picture i mean <laughs> i know because <laughs> it's not oscarish Oscars. You know? it's not even Oscar-ish. not even Meyerish. It's just <laughs> I don't no, know. No, because Oscar movies are like no blowing up, no shooting, no. It's no, basically I mean, the Tarantino, Lord of the Rings, stuff. Return of the King won an Oscar, best. Picture. Oh yeah, they did. You know, you can do it, but <laughs> true, true, out of all the true. movies that are out there, Thor. <laughs> <laughs> no. um, hey, we live in a new world. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> new world order. <laughs> yeah. Um, speaking of movies, mm-hmm. um, Iron Man and The Little Mermaid has been added to the National Film Registry by the Library of Congress. Hmm. Now, these films are not selected because they're best American films or anything like that. So they're not like Oscar or anything. But it's really this library or National Film Registry is more like um, works of enduring importance to American culture. Right. So they reflect who we are as people and as a nation. It's for history purposes. Mm-hmm. Right. I guess Little Mermaid. I mean. Yeah, you complain about Little Mermaid all the time. I know. Why is that? Part of history. I guess that's what American <laughs> culture is like, right? <laughs> Change yourself for a guy you don't know exists. Oh, here we go. <laughs> What a umpteenth time. If that's what <laughs> American culture is. <laughs> <sighs> Iron Man, yes, that makes sense. Because it's the let it go, Tracy. Just let it go. Because <laughs> um, Iron Man, I get, because it's like the beginning of the the superhero the or MCU, whatever. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, the, the I Little, Mer- Superman Little Mermaid there. is incredibly popular. I mean, there's they're still selling Little Mermaid merch. All you gotta do is follow the merch. If they still have Little yeah. Mermaid merch on sale, people are still into it. People, whether it's for nostalgia's sake or whether new kids are liking it, it's 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 popular. A lot of people. Now like I'm it. wondering what else is in this National Film merch. I'm assuming Snow White and all that stuff is in there already. Probably, definitely Snow White, Wizard of Oz, you know, Batman. Maybe I don't know. De- maybe Christopher Reeves Superman. Yeah, Christopher Superman. Reeves, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I think uh, I, I'm not mad at that. I mean, you know, it, they're historic films, you know, and they're still they're still producing even now. Yeah. So I guess if you consider them classics, you would consider them classics. Yeah. They're supposed to be something that are, mm-hmm. yeah, just in history, part of history, I guess. Mm-hmm. All right. Is that it? Yes. Okay. What are we doing now? <laughs> it's Taste Talk with Tracy. Mash some magic in your mouth. So we'll ta- finally talk about a festival of holidays food item. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Lox and Everything Bagels Nachos. Mm. So this was at the um, Taste of Traditions booth. That was actually the first thing we had. Well, besides the rum. <laughs> mm. That is the first thing we have during the food, the holiday food festival. And it's basically like lox and bagels, which is one of my favorite things to eat. So it came in nacho form, which is just bagel chips topped with cream cheese, smoked salmon, um, the everything bagel spice, and a mixture of onions, tomatoes, and capers. Yeah. Like it was an everything good. bagel in nacho form. Yeah, it's pretty good. I mean, because uh, but the bagels are kind of crisps, though, right? Yeah, they're bagel chips. Yeah. So, so I, when I when I first saw it, I was like, I thought there was going to be like slices of bagels that sliced up, but they're chips. So, oh. <laughs> so, so that surprises you, and it makes you like, oh, that's like not nachos. What I was, yeah, wasn't what I was expecting. But then, yeah, I mean, I think I think it was pretty good. Yeah. You know, it wasn't. It's it's kind of original. It's something mm-hmm. that you could probably make yourself for snack. Right. Right. So. Which is, to me, it's not a knock on it. To me, it's like if you can replicate it and it'd be cool at a party that you're throwing, it's po- that's a good thing. That's a good idea. I might replicate it at home. Yeah. Since it's my favorite thing to eat. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and, and it's pretty cool. I mean, 
and, and I'm sure it's it's not going to be super expensive to make. So mm-hmm. um, that's what I, I think something that can be replicated that tastes good at the parks and at home. That's to me is something pretty cool. There are some things at the park that you could only have at the park, and if that's the case, then I would definitely have a higher expectation as far as the taste. Yeah. So, but this is something that was like snackable, good idea, and it tastes pretty good. Mm-hmm. So definitely, it's going to be a thumbs up for and me. And yeah, it's a new item for this year. They didn't have it the previous years. That's why I decided to review this first in case we don't mm-hmm. have enough time to review the other stuff. Yeah. That they already had the previous year. So this is a new item, and yeah, I think it's good. Definitely cost effective for them. <laughs> because mm-hmm. of, for the kind of stuff they well, have, well, the smoked salmon's kind of expensive to make, right? I think to if buy you, or whatever. well, they, I, I mean, how much smoked salmon was in every portion? Though it wasn't. Yeah, it's a not ton. much. You know, they took cop, put it in they like little cubes, kind of. Yeah, it was cubed up. So yeah, you buy or diced. you buy one big piece, and it's probably good for three portions. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then you just cube it, tunk, tunk, they put it <laughs> like a like a cookie cutter with a bunch of cubes. You just take the cubes, and then yeah. So, um, yeah, I think it's probably. I don't. I don't know if it's that expensive, but. Well, this thing, this little thing, was eight fifty a pop. So it. Yeah. They did charge yeah. a lot for it because they're seafood, I guess. Yeah, well, that's so. It's Disney prices. Too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, put the Disney tax on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but definitely thumbs up for me. All right. Disney. <laughs> so this is what you were talking about or trying to allude to is a Florida pastor and his son <laughs> used COVID-19 relief money to yeah. try to buy a $3.7 million Disney World mansion. <laughs> yeah. Disney World mansion meaning like a mansion in Disney World or a it's Disney World of, It's part of mansion. one of their planned communities. Yeah. Oh. That's in Florida, so... You know, you know that Disney neighborhood that they have. Oh, oh, I didn't know they had that in Florida. Yeah, yeah, we talked about it a few times. Um, yeah, it. <laughs> they used PPP loan, and what they did was they kind of did what, <laughs> what you know, the FTX guy did. It's it's kind of like, well, kind of what Trump did actually. Exaggerated <laughs> his the um the size of their business. Mm-hmm. And because they said they were this huge, like five hundred one c three business, and yeah, they're doing church or something, church or, or, something. or nonprofit or whatever. Yeah. And but they made it sound like they were this big international thing, and and and, and so when you exaggerate the am- amount, that actually increases the amount of the loan you can apply for. Oh. So because if I have like like a coffee cart somewhere, you know, I could still apply. because the PPP stands for like um, Paycheck Protection Program, so it's basically. The intent, now this is not what it was used for <laughs> from by mm-hmm. the vast majority of people, but the intent was for you to pay payroll. Yeah, for your employees yeah. if you own yeah. a business. Yeah, and then you get for, the loans got forgiven. Now, a lot of people who applied for these loans, and, and that's why a lot of small businesses are super upset mm-hmm. because there were a lot of small businesses that I know, just anecdotally mm-hmm. around here, who were rejected from them, and they actually have employees, and there were people who have businesses that had maybe no employees, or maybe that you know, me and my wife are the only employees. Mm-hmm. Like if I applied for a PPP loan for rope dropping knowledge, and then got you know money for me and you, is that as fair as a a, a restaurant that yeah. actually has but fifteen how come, employees? Were they rejected, know? or was it like the system was so overwhelmed that by the time it got, it was hard for them to get through? The I think, smaller businesses that I think it's, legit yeah, need them. Anytime it's like that, think of like Ticketmaster and Taylor Swift. It's like oh, the yeah. people so who it's know like the they system. Get through. Yeah. Well, it's not that they couldn't get through. It's that the people who know and the people who have good lawyers and the people who have political inside connections, they know how to get through that system real quick. Mm-hmm. If you're just a small business, you're not going to have those type of resources. Yeah, you're a restaurant owner who's yeah. logging on to your computer. You know, and you're not going to hire a lawyer a year in advance because you think a pandemic might be coming and they might be offering a loan that you could possibly yeah. get. Yeah. You know, They're just going to have to fill it out themselves and hope for the best. And if they didn't cross one T, reject it. If they didn't fill out this correctly, reject it. And so... Um, if you didn't do it in time and like the money, yeah, the funds run out, reject it. Yeah, didn't have time or whatever. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of these people got 
money for their stuff. Probably didn't even have to do it themselves, you know. And uh, yeah, so people who really needed it didn't get it, you know. That's why people yeah. are critical of the government. Because <laughs> we heard that Shake Shack and all those big companies got it, but they yeah. pay, paid it back because they didn't really need it. But somehow mm-hmm. they probably have like some intern or whatever filling it out. I don't know. But yeah, no, they, they I, I, at that time we heard a lot of company, big com- chains mm-hmm. get it, but paid it back. Like, you know, gave it back. Or, and, and that was a loophole too because you weren't supposed to get it if you were a big business. But what they could do is say, well, each franchise is a separate business. Yeah. So if you're a McDonald's, you could say, well, we're not a big business. We're just 300,000 small businesses, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and so they didn't get it, you know? <laughs> um, so yeah, this uh, pastor and son, Evan and Joshua Edwards, facing fraud charges, and they lied about their ministry to get their loan was $8.4 million. Yeah. So... What happened was is that they were just really blatant, and they got caught. And then they, tr- you know, the money. If they would have just used it f- for their business, they probably would be left alone. Um, but then you can't do that and then floss and say, "Well, we're getting a mansion to live in, <laughs> a Disney mansion." Yeah, <laughs> you know, because that's what pastors need. You know, <laughs> yeah, they're they're going to go down. Wow. But it's uh yeah, it is what it is, you know. Are they the worst offenders? No. No, probably but, a lot more. But they're they got caught. So and when you get caught and you don't have connections, you're probably going to jail. Yep. <laughs> well, we're gonna keep with the uh couple more Florida news here. Mm-hmm. Keep in that area for now. <laughs> <laughs> um another fight broke out. During the Hunchback of Notre Dame section of the Harmonious um, Fireworks Show really? at Epcot. Yeah. So a physical fight broke out. Um, there was a, a guest who wasn't involved, of course, shared the video. And then of course. Mm-hmm. It shows like two guests visibly struggling with each other on the ground. Oh my God. And then all the other guests are just shining lights on them because they're videotaping it. Or videotaping. <laughs> videoing mm-hmm. it with their cell phones. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there are some guests who tried to pull them apart. But, um, yeah, the article's funny. This is the reason for the fight is unknown. Guests can be heard arguing, but the words are unintelligible over the ironic music of mm-hmm. out there from Hunchback of Notre Dame. <laughs> Given that the fans believe guests who fight should have shouldn't have been allowed out there at Disney World. <laughs> so, what, do you, what do you mean they shouldn't have been allowed? Because the song was out there. Oh. You shouldn't be out there. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> You're I was fighting. Like, I, wasn't even about I know. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> so it, that's some of the, the, um, the, that music is pretty epic. Yeah. So, it's part of the 100 year celebration. Well, I'm just thinking of like, I want to see the video and, the, and the, you know, if it's one of the big epic songs in the background, <laughs> these two yeah, Floridians that's what fighting it was. on the ground. Because all the, the, oh, you watched the it? film, no, they the, it describes all the film as. They couldn't hear what the two were arguing about because of the fireworks song or with the <laughs> show, the music. The, they said the ironic music of Out There playing in the background while these two men are on the floor. What if this was just a, a, a superhero, supervillain fight that we just think are just two men? That maybe the epicness, they deserved it. <laughs> maybe, it <was> like, <laughs> maybe this was a fight to save the world. Maybe, maybe one of them was a squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Plenty of scrolls in Florida. <laughs> I don't know. I think that um yeah, that's pretty funny. <laughs> Florida. <laughs> Speaking of fighting, um did you see that your bully was at Disneyland today? Which oh uh, Gwen Stefani and her yeah, family yeah. was at Disneyland. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did you tell our listeners, the story of you being yeah, a bullied. A long, long time ago. Oh. Something I'm trying to put behind me. Brian was bullied by Gwen Stefani when he was like five or four. Yeah, yeah six, seven. Oh. Uh, <laughs> older and older. <laughs> 20, and I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the people don't understand. Girls are bigger than boys when they're that age. Yeah. She's taller than me now. Yeah, girls grow. Fast, 
and then they stop, and then the boys grow taller after. Yeah, and it was in Anaheim. She thinks she's the queen of Anaheim. <laughs> Man, I'm, not I'm when a, she was six. <laughs> I'm the princess of Anaheim. <laughs> <laughs> and she pushed you off the slide. Well, the top of the slide, they, there was this park where they had these things that you could steer, like a ship. Oh they yeah, had steering wheels mm-hmm. or like for ships, you know, mm-hmm. whatever you call. Them. And there was like four of them, and they were all. And I had one of them, and then the three other kids had the other three, mm-hmm. and she wanted mine, and <laughs> I was like, no. <laughs> and she pushed me, and kicked me down the slide. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, I didn't even know. Who she, I didn't even know who she was. And t- like, like later on, you grew she, up. You're like, that's the girl. Yeah, because my my mom knew her parents, or my grandparents knew her parents, or something like that. So they knew the family. You know? <laughs> and then it's like, oh, that girl kicked you down the slide. She, <laughs> yeah, she's in. She's in nothing. Song hit number one. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, yes. You got beat up, and she's just a girl. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I don't know what she's complaining about in that song. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, just a, a girl g- who kicks kids down the slide. Exactly. <laughs> 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 Whatever. <laughs> but she was a kid herself. Oh. Sally, now, if she kicks a six-year-old boy down the slide, then there's probably, then she'll be canceled. But <laughs> I wouldn't put it past her. <laughs> Wouldn't put it past her. <laughs> All right, back to Florida. <laughs> um, Florida Congressman Byron Donalds, a Republican who represents Florida's 19th district, speaks out about Splash Mountain. He says the attraction didn't bother him or anybody. And he's, here's his quote. Let me get this straight. Splash Mountain's racist, but Joe Biden saying you're not black if you don't vote for him isn't? Cancel Joe, not Splash Mountain. That's what he said. Well, <laughs> but yeah. as I, of course, you know, he's, he was on Newsmax saying this, so, <laughs> so <laughs> nobody heard him. <laughs> so now our listeners heard him. <laughs> so, anyways, yeah. I just thought that was funny. Yeah. His his speech, cancel Joe, not Splash Mountain. <laughs> but 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 in in certain communities, that's a mic drop, though. Like really, he, they, people don't say things that don't work. So it's kind of like a lot of people are upset, but like we talked about this a long time ago when this was first announced, they're not upset because they're racist. They're upset because like how they were upset when Tower of Terror turned into Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout. Yeah, but I mean, there are people. They're upset because of the when you when you're if you're a politician, you don't need three hundred million people to vote for you. If you're especially if you're a congressman, Mm -hmm. you you need the margin of error. Like you need maybe like five thousand more people. To vote for you than the other person, mm-hmm. you know, because um, that's how the margins are getting even thinner and thinner. Yeah. So what I'm saying is, by it, it, it worked like in mic drop. Like it sounds stupid to you, even if you it's lived in. Fl- I just thought it was funny. No, no, I'm just saying that he ain't talking to you. Right, right, right. <laughs> He's talking to those five extra people that he could get up and be like, "Yeah, you know, <laughs> Splash Mountain's not racist. Joe Biden's racist." <laughs> And whoever makes a decision should not do this to Splash Mountain. They should do that to Joe Biden because it's the same guy, of course, who makes that decision. And, you know, it's like the way people think it is weird. Yeah, yeah. You know? But um, I don't even, <laughs> you know, it's, it's one of those things where it's like he knows what he's doing. And he got, he got, he got some headlines out of it. If you want, if you want to like get rid of people like this, like don't cover them. I'm not saying that we're bad for covering them. You know, it's it's a Disney related topic, but Disney might respond. Well, Chapek would probably <laughs> say something <laughs> stupid. <laughs> they could give him more traction. Iger's just going to ignore it. He's not going yeah, to acknowledge no. it because that's yeah. the way you deal with stuff like that, though. So, but yeah, because mm. um, Splash Mountains. There's a date for its closure at Disney World already, mm-hmm. January twenty third, twenty twenty three. So, mm. a lot of people are upset and mm-hmm. blah blah. Yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> you know, I was upset with a lot of things when I was a kid. <laughs> um, but not really upset with this. I mean, they're making it. We don't write it anyway. Yeah, I don't write it. <laughs> we don't like drops. <laughs> yeah. Now, 
Is there a conversation to be had that people who like Splash Mountain, who like you were saying, who aren't, who don't care about the racism, or maybe are anti-racist themselves, but still don't think that Splash Mountain was super offensive, should they be able to express their feelings without being made villains? Yeah, that's a good com. That's an interesting conversation, but that's. I think it's more it's because not, there's the people who are those Disney um, traditionalists who wants everything original. Yeah, but Even that's what I'm, that's what I'm talking about. Walt original, I mean. But I'm just saying that that's a, that's a conversation. But when you have your spokesman is going to count for you. So if you allow this guy to speak for you, then the answer is going to be like, yeah, you're you're not allowed to speak. If that's what yeah. you know, if you don't allow. Like, if if you really want to be heard and say, hey, I'm forced the original Splash Mountain, this guy doesn't speak for me. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> You know, yeah, yeah. I can see how it could be problematic for some people, but I still think they could have made some changes and kept the original Splash Mountain. You could say that. Yeah. Because uh, people were upset problem. about the red woman. Yeah, I think that I think that when you allow weirdos to speak for you, um, then you're allowing the nuance to be lost. Like, our job as people is people who are just how oh, I consider normal people who are not on the fringes of politics is just to say, let's speak up for nuance. Mm -hmm. Let's not just say, well, I'm either on this side or this side. And yeah. part of partly that's the way that our country's divided on purpose. Yeah. But that doesn't mean you have to accept it, you know? So when you allow a, a, a nut job to speak for you. <laughs> People are going to consider you a nut job. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the same thing you tell your kids. Yeah. You know, you hang out with a certain crowd. It, that doesn't mean just because you didn't do anything wrong, that's not what people are going to think. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So. That makes sense. Yeah. All right. Is that our last one? Um, oh, yeah. One quick thing that I forgot to mention about Tron is um, they're doing Tron light cycle run testing with people on the ride at the Magic Kingdom. So there is. A glimmer of light there, Disney World people <laughs> glimmer for of Tron. Light. Tron, <laughs> which basically all it is They're is glimmers of light. Testing it. <laughs> <laughs> They're testing it with people on it, like cast members are on yeah. it. Like, you know, so there, there's something. It's coming, guys. Just hold on. <laughs> 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 Ten years later. Oh, well, they're still testing it. <laughs> but, yes, that's the last thing. So what we are going to do now is... We are going to do a spoiler review of Andor. So, yeah, I tricked you guys. <laughs> so, as before, those of you who stay and listen are eligible to win a prize. Those of you who are just wimpy. And, 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 I'm joking. I'm joking. I had a coworker say, Brian, not all of us, you know, some of us have kids. We can't just listen and watch everything on time. I'm like, I know. I'm joking. <laughs> But you still ain't winning the prize. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah, you guys could cut out now. And uh, and it's not going to be a long review, but we are going to go into it right now. All right. So we finished Andor a few weeks back. And I think we watched it every episode, you know, on time. It was... Something we didn't stay up till midnight, but we... For the first few we did, yeah. and then we stopped. And then after that, we're like, okay, we'll watch it the next day. Because it kind of requires some attention. Yeah. yeah. It's not like just a blow em up type of thing. Yeah. And it's weird because this is... You know, I always go off on the Star Wars fandom <laughs> because they're so, they're so whiny, you know. and But this was one of the ones that actually gave a lot of people what they wanted. Mm-hmm. Great acting, great production. Didn't use have an over reliance on CGI. Um, great actors, mm -hmm. you know, people who can actually, you know, pull off the roles. Yeah, uh, the story was good, engaging. It didn't use a lot of cliches. So, like, you know, like when they're doing the heist or when they're escaping the prison, what would typically happen in your in your typical role is like they tell you the plan. Because they want to throw a twist in where how that plan messes up. Mm -hmm. No, the plans go off the way they're supposed to. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, the, and the way they set it up was like they had like these three episode arcs. Like so, the yeah. first first arc, you know, he he kills um, one of the security guardsmen. Two. You know, oh, he actually kills. Yeah, he, well, he kills one and then has to kill the other because mm -hmm. he's a witness. Mm -hmm. um, Andrew's not a good guy. 
You know, mm-hmm. he's he's uh, he's a scoundrel from the beginning. And it kind of, not kind of, but it does show that the rebellion, at least the people in the beginning of the rebellion, and what it takes to have a rebellion is not clean. It's dirty. It's fighting by the same rules as the enemy, as the bad guy a lot of the times. It's using people, um, sometimes killing people who are innocent. Sacrificing. Sacrificing people. people. I mean, they really make it realistic. I mean, this is like if Star Wars was actually in our universe. You know, <laughs> it was like. Well, it's realistic in the sense that if you want to win, you got to play dirty like them. There's no like go high when they go low type of thing that you go low. <laughs> but that is a d- departure from Star Wars because you watch Star Wars, the original trilogy. Um, it, well, almost all of them. Yeah, all the movies. Yeah. It's like, except for the prequels, where the bad guys actually win at the end. <laughs> yeah. But if you watch like most of it, it's it's basically the the rebels are celebrated. Like we're just gonna come in, we're gonna slay the dragon, and we get medals at the end, and there's fireworks, right? Right. This shows you. No, this is the dirt that has to be done to get there. To get there, yeah. If you don't do the dirt, you don't get there. Yeah, you have to get dirty before you get clean. And yes. uh, it, it's when you look at revolutions that happen on our planet, mm-hmm. um, that's what goes down. That's why rebels, that's why we call them terrorists. Yeah. Because basically, and or the rebellion are basically terrorists. Right. Now... When you're looking from the outside in, you could say, well, we know about Darth Sidious. We know about the Emperor. You know, we know about Darth Vader. We know about the dark side. Yeah, we can look at it and say, we know who the worst guys are. You know what I mean? And by the way, they don't sugarcoat the Empire. The Empire is bad. (laughs) The Empire, (laughs) it shows you not just that the the good guys are dirty and they, they do a lot of evil things, too. It also shows you, and this is probably the most important part, but it's, this is the nuance. When I talk about nuance, mm-hmm. they show you what it takes to get good people to do, you know, bad things for their cause. Yeah. Because the empire is so oppressive and doesn't care um, about your lives and, and whatever, like every step of the way, it's like you too could become a terrorist. <laughs> you know <laughs> what I mean? It's like if you lived under those conditions. And so. Yeah. Um, and it's not to say that they're glorifying terrorism. Actually, it's the opposite. It right. it, it it tells you that it tells you the sacrifice. And like they, it, it puts you inside the mind of somebody who would be a terrorist. And I use the word terrorist because that's what they are. You know, they're because yeah. innocent people they kill innocent people. Right. Matter of fact, Andor and when he goes on, you know, I know I'm not, I'm not giving want to give away so much spoilers like the entire plot, but I'm just I need to kind of say it's spoiler because I'm going to be giving away certain things but the arc where he they're planning the big heist um, at the base and after they win and they do everything right first of all they kidnap the commander's family mm-hmm. they, at gunpoint mm-hmm. and, said, and they would have killed all of them mm-hmm. the commander does die <laughs> Yes, but they would have killed the mom and the kid too mm-hmm. you know and those are the good guys <laughs> yeah. quote unquote good guys right yeah um, and then even at the end, you know, one of them was about to betray him and Andor kills that guy. Mm-hmm. And then even after everything's done, everything got their money, Andor takes off, says, Hey, I'm out, I'm taking my Give cut. Give me Just my money, him. yeah, I'm out. And what are the, what's the first thing they do? We gotta kill Andor because he's he knows us, he knows He knows too much. He yeah, he did much. this with us, yeah. He did this with us, so we gotta kill him. And you gotta figure that that was the plan from the beginning. Yeah. You know, they were gonna kill him. <laughs> So they hire this guy who, because of his skills, and then, yeah, he's just as disposable as anyone else, right. even though he did. It's for the cause. Yeah. And so. But if you're um, not willing, like the Skarsgård guys, is mm-hmm. not willing to sacrifice. Skarsgård, it's a TV show, but if anyone deserves a freaking Oscar <laughs> for a TV show, it would be him. Yeah. He, man. He's good. That one monologue he did under Coruscant with the ginger guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's what made me think, this is what it takes. You can't be all like, you know, self-righteous and stuff. You got to do what you got to do. Mm-hmm. And they even say it. that's the theme throughout the show mm-hmm. is um, the rebellion first. We take mm-hmm. what's left over. Right. Because there's like, a, you, you know, left. Mm-hmm. yeah, there's this romantic relationship. And mm-hmm. then like, what about us? Am I never going to see you again? And 
the other girl and says. Any, and that's my point. In any other movie, that would take precedent. Right. No, our love should come first. No, yeah. And then and, she says and, and, no. How many movies do you roll your eyes <laughs> when like the world is blowing up and it's like, I got to go get my boyfriend or my girlfriend. I got to save so and so. Hunger Games. You know, Ugh. it's like. <laughs> and, and, and they're not even Wanda. playing for biggest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This is this is this is the movie type of thing show that that pleases Tracy <laughs> because they would have sacrificed Vision in a heartbeat. Yeah, <laughs> it's for the cause or matter, whatever. Right? Matter of fact, if 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 the the rebels in in Andor <laughs> were in Infinity War, <laughs> they would have killed Vision before they even th- knew he had the Mind Stone because it's like, dude, you're too good. You're a liability just the way you're talking. <laughs> They would have killed him. In a, they would have killed him in Age of Ultron. <laughs> probably would have destroyed all Infinity Stones. That's the way nobody they has one power. They would have killed everybody. Yeah. They would have killed Cap. Dude, you're too right. You're not down, dude. <laughs> you are not down. <laughs> kill you. Kill you. Kill you. There. <laughs> yeah, this is not the MCU. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why when he's when they said that throughout the theme, it's like, oh, they yeah, love whatever, you know. Oh, but I love you. But no, the rebellion is first. We take what's left over. Yeah, yeah. If we happen to be still that's alive, re- then, then so that, real. that's the time to love or whatever. It's almost too real for Star Wars fans. Yeah. So a lot of Star Wars fans are they like, this like is it. what I've been waiting for my whole life. Yeah. For them to take the thing that I love and make it serious. And then there and was the, half of them who then like the other the happy half stuff. they want the pew pew. It's like yeah, the pew pew. <laughs> there's what no force chokes, no lasers, you know, no pew pew pew. You know, <laughs> and then it's like to me, um, in, 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 I like the I like the force stuff. I like the the, the Jedi saber mm-hmm. fights. I like all that. I love all that. I'm not gonna say I like all that. I love all that. Mm-hmm. You know, to me, when you have an entire universe, there's room for everything. Mm-hmm. So the f- I think Andor gives them the license to now to do more serious stuff. Yeah. And some of that serious stuff could bleed into other stuff. Mm-hmm. So, and it actually makes the Pew Pew stuff more relevant. Mm-hmm. Because now when you watch a Mandalorian or when you watch, you know, you know even the prequels or the, the original series, it actually, when they win against the Empire or when they beat, a Sith Lord or, or anything, it's kind of like it it it, it you understand the stakes better if yeah. you've watched Andor. Yeah. Because when you watch Andor, you see what it's what life is like under the Empire for the average person. Yeah. And it's horrible. Yeah. You know? And that is probably the biggest lesson to take away. And I, I think people if they need to think strategically, if you watch Andor, you're gonna be really happy when they win at the end. It actually makes the sequels better. It does, yeah. Because, because of all that take, all that sacrifice it took to become to create the rebellion, mm-hmm. right? Because when I was before Andor and I'm watching Star Wars, I'm like, dude, these rebellions have been fighting for like forty years, and yeah. they're not going anywhere. They're yeah. still the Empire and the First Order and all this stuff. Yeah. But then now you see, you know, what it takes and how hard it is to. And, and you and you re- and you realize what Skarsgård's um, character says. Access, <laughs> they call him access. access. <laughs> but what he says is that that when uh, Mon Mothma, who did great, mm-hmm. um, awesome performance by her, I forget the name of the actress, but um, she says, you know, well, innocent people will pay for this, and he's like, good, yeah, because <laughs> that's what gets them off the couch. That's yeah. what gets them involved. Yeah. When the empire cracks down, that's how rebellions are made. Mm-hmm. You know, when people are just kind of comfortable, people have a very high tolerance mm-hmm. for oppression. Mm-hmm. So if you're just kind of, and it's in, in, in a weird way, I mean, me and you are kind of, you know, we're independent voters and we're kind of like, you know, we did all, we were, you know, we got vaccinated, we're down with the masks, you know, we we were kind of like that. But, we were kind of in the Mon Mothma class of people. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Not like super rich, but we were like... Comfortable. Yeah. It didn't affect us. But the people who had small businesses, that got shut down. And the people who had this, they're mm-hmm. saying, well, this if the government can do this, why couldn't it do this next thing? Or why couldn't it do this next thing? So even though the, the QAnon people and all those people are cringe to me, mm-hmm. um, the fact that people are able to think that the government is behind a lot of stuff is a good thing to exist in moderation, right? Mm-hmm. You don't want those people to disappear completely. Right. It's kind of like I was talking about Karen's. 
Mm, sometimes you want to care around. Yeah. <laughs> to have a balanced society, you need people who are willing to buck the government, mm-hmm. regardless of who's in power. Right. Because, um, yeah, oppression can come. Oppression doesn't come in a wave. Mm-hmm. It can come slowly, inch by inch. It can come in a wave. It's, yeah, there could be a lot of people that get together and boom, there's mm-hmm. a there's a civil war. But usually, it's just like, yeah, what we'll, we'll take this away, and okay, well, yeah, we take the next thing away, okay. And before you thought, you know, twenty years later, there's a thousand things that were taken away, mm-hmm. but because it happened slowly, you didn't notice, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Like global warming, kind of, you know, <laughs> that water an inch a, a year it doesn't you're like okay, but and it can be underwater mm-hmm. <laughs> eventually. So, mm-hmm. um, so yeah, I thought this was very well done, very well acted. Um, I recommend everyone watch it. Star Wars fan, I think they're like they're going to be putting it on ABC. Yeah. So that's how much confidence they have that it's uh that it can play to any audience. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, again, I, I said this is a spoiler. I'm not giving away the whole plot. It's kind of just my. Uh, interpretations on it oh andy circus was in it andy circus was great yeah um he's only in it for one arc but he was great yeah um and it's and it's you're not going to see a lot of special effects and there's no force powers being used so i'm just <laughs> going to give you that up front yeah don't if you're expecting but like definitely not boring. lightsaber fights and and force chokes you're not going to get that but it's funny because when we, this was first announced you were like Eh, I'm not interested. It doesn't sound appealing. But then now it's like one of our favorite shows. Well, it's one of those things where the only thing Disney was offering kind of is the pew pew, right? Right. So if if you're if if that's what you're offering, the Mandalorian did it best. It has, you know, the gunfights, it has, you know, the jetpacks, it has, you know, the droids, it has and then and they, and, and they put Luke Skywalker in at the yeah. end of the last <laughs> season. So so there's a lot of there's a lot of fan service to like about the Mandalorian. Yeah, this has no fan service, and I knew it wasn't going to have any fan service. Mm-hmm. So to me, it's like, well, if the acting and stuff is as poor as it was in Kenobi, and the stories are kind of <laughs> disjointed as it was in Boba Fett, but I don't get any of the the, the, pew, the pew. flash and bang, yeah. any of the pew pew. Why would I watch this? Why would anybody watch this show? Right, because they haven't shown me that they have the script and the actors and or at least giving the actors the opportunity yeah. to just produce a good show. Yeah. But they pulled it off. Yeah. And they did it. I'm surprised this show is so good. I'm surprised it got greenlit by Disney. <laughs> because it was <laughs> because it's all of this is acting. That Tarantino would like. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is totally Yeah, it's totally what Tarantino and Scorsese would like. <laughs> yeah. It's 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 something they would like. It's really good dialogue. If you like good dialogue, good story, and and a well structured plot, this is this is the type of show for you. Yeah, it's twelve episodes, I believe. Yes. And um, so it, it's long, but they have like it breaks it up because there's the first three episodes is one arc, the the next three episodes is another arc, and then they have the next three, and they have it kind of mixes up in the last mm-hmm. few, but um, they're but still it a, they're still and ends, ends in yeah. The same. And it, and and it completes a circle, right? Mm-hmm. It completes it. They call, it comes back to the same place where they started, and um, yeah, the empire's scary. Every time they show the scenes of the empire, it's scary. They are terrifying. Yeah, they are terrifying. I guess that's so. what it's like in North Korea. And and the thing is, is <laughs> yeah. imagine. And the thing about it is, is it's they're terrifying without the force powers. Yeah. You know, they're you don't just need terrifying. you don't need Darth Vader to be terrifying. They're showing no. you, they're showing you how terrifying people can be. Yeah. And that's why it's so good. So, mm-hmm. all right. Well, that's it for us today. Oh, I guess we got to do the tell them what they can win. Oh, yes. Uh, so you have, we have it up. An Andor, I, I posted it. It's a little Andor insulated mug. Not Hydro Flask, but it's a similar company. I forgot the name of it. <laughs> but it's an Andor mug. Mm-hmm. Um, insulated. I think it's for wine or coffee. Um, keeps it the same temperature. And... All you oh, have yeah. to do is, um, let's see, what's a good question to ask them? Well, so with these, you only tell them to message us yeah. a phrase or something. A phrase. Oh, just message us the phrase, one way out. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a good one. <laughs> message us the phrase, one way out. We'll know what it means. Um, and it's in the show. 
and uh, it's really good in the second arc. So it's yes. a major theme of the second arc. Yes. So one way out. One and way uh, out. that's all you have to do. And uh, we know you listen to this and you will be entered in the drawing. <laughs> all right. Don't know when this is going to end. Probably end it mm, probably after Christmas. Just give people oh, okay. a little something to win. Yeah, yeah, something to watch while you're on your Christmas break. <laughs> yeah, because you know I want I want people to catch up. So, you know, Christmas is what next um, week from Sunday, I think. So, yeah, let's end it on. Let's end it on the the twenty eighth. Okay. Yeah. You know what? No, let's end it on the thirty first. Yeah. Or do you want to do the twenty eighth since we might be busy on the thirty first stuff? It's up to you. Um We gotta we gotta Which nail one's it a Saturday? The thirty first. Okay, let's do the thirty first. All right. New Year's Eve. It ends on New Year's Eve. Yeah. We'll give you to the end of the year to do this. <laughs> <laughs> one way out, message us and you can win. And you know us, we might throw a little something extra in there. Yeah. Since we're, since it's so long, since you got two weeks to do this, and we might even throw a little something extra in there to reward you guys. All right, all right, that's it for us this week. I'm Brian. I'm Tracy. Stay magical. Bye. Thank you for listening. Be sure to like and subscribe, and visit us at www.ropedroppingknowledge.com.